All right, guys. Hey, welcome to the video. And I know it's been a while since the last one. And in the last one, I told you I was going to try and make these videos a little bit more frequently. But every time I say that, it seems like something else comes up. Uh, but yeah, since then, uh, I've taken on more things uh, that I want to do for my side business. And so there was more things that I had to learn. And that took up time. Plus, I took a long and I think well-deserved vacation because I hadn't had one in like a real one in like three or four years. And uh, yeah, just some other stuff. I'm also preparing for a big move. And uh, so I have to decide where it is that, you know, I want to go and stuff. And I could pretty much go almost anywhere in the country that I want. So I just have to decide where. And then, you know, there's a lot of planning that's involved. And I have to get a semi truck because I got so much stuff. It takes one of those to fit all my junk in. Uh, plus, there's cars that have to be transported and well, all of this stuff. So anyway, yeah. That's taking up a lot of time there. So hopefully now I'll be able to get these out, uh, you know, a, a bit more frequently. Anyway, if you don't know what this is all about, I'm going to put links down in the description. Part one of this series, uh, the first five or six minutes, if you watch that, it kind of covers everything. But just to summarize in a nutshell, I pretty much want to make a playlist on this channel that revolves around RetroArch and, uh, you know, all kinds of tutorials since it's everywhere, like almost on every platform. And so these preparation videos are showing you how to and going over how to, you know, get your files organized from your ROMs, your BIOS, like we're talking about, you know, today, how to clean your ROMs, which will be in the next video, how to, um, you know, get your database ready, your chief files ready and all this stuff. So that way you have everything nice and set and neat and in order. So you can literally copy everything from one uh, you know, platform of RetroArch to the next, to the next, um, because the way it's designed, its architecture is very easy so that when you have everything set up, you can just copy and paste everything from the ROMs and the other files to the different versions and different platforms that RetroArch is on makes your life 100% easier. So today we will be talking about BIOS and then near the end of the video, I'm gonna go over a little bit more specifically about the Neo Geo BIOS, how to update those and whatnot. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Okay, and our first stop here will be at the BIOS Information Hub located at the Libertro Docs page because RetroArch uses the Libertro cores or the Libertro emulators, then this is something you should definitely bookmark because it may come in handy. There's a lot of good information here regarding the BIOS. One of the things that I like about this is that since these cores are pretty much used in RetroArch across all the different platforms and systems, the BIOS information that's here covers all the different um, platforms that RetroArch is used on almost all of them. There might be one or two exceptions as of now to that rule, and I'll cover those here in a little bit. But um, if you're looking for some BIOS information uh, for um, you know, your particular emulator then that's used through RetroArch, then this is the place you wanna come to. Also, some people don't know that you know not all BIOS are created equal. Just because you find BIOS out there, or maybe some BIOS came in with your ROM set, it doesn't mean that they're the exact ones you need because here they tell you the exact ones they need to be according to the MD5 checksum. So for example, let's look at the Atari 7800 BIOS information. It tells you what the file of the BIOS name needs to be. It also tells you whether it's required or not. In this case, it's optional. I have found though that <clears throat> A lot of games don't work unless I have the BIOS in there for Atari 7800, so I keep them in there. But more importantly, it gives you the checksum. So I know I need to find the Atari 7800 BIOS that match this checksum exactly. Some people alter these BIOS for whatever reason, and if they're not exactly the ones that are required for this emulator, then some of the ROMs may not work. Maybe all the ROMs in uh, that ROM set may not work properly or at all. So you wanna make sure you have the exact ones. Let me show you the Sega CD ones here uh, using the Genesis Plus GX emulator, which is popular. A lot of people use that one. And if you come here, you'll see that there's a lot of BIOS here, but many of them are optional. This one here is, and all the ones from here down are. 
the ones that are required say that they're required, like these three here, this one, this one, and this one. Before, I could not get my backed up Sega CDs uh, ROM files to work or my bin files or whatever. I was trying to get them to work through my PS3. I kind of gave up on it for a little while, but then a couple of years ago when this new GUI RetroArch came out um, and I found out, you know, uh, the MD5 checksums of these BIOS, what they needed to be, it turns out the ones I had were different. They weren't these. So when I put these in there, then they worked just fine. Even though the older ones I had were named properly, they weren't the exact same ones. So my games weren't working. As soon as I put these in there, they all worked. So that's just an example why you need to make sure you have the exact BIOS. And since people out there can change them and have changed them, you want to make sure you get the right ones. All right, and the next stop in our little BIOS bus tour here brings us to RetroPie, the GitHub page of RetroPie. And uh, it's a RetroPie setup pages. Uh, we're gonna take a look at the main RetroPie setup page here on GitHub, and then the one that has the BIOS. Now RetroPie is RetroArch, but it's the RetroArch that's designed for use with the Raspberry Pi micro PCs, like the one you see here and ones similar to this one. But don't let the cute name fool you. It's still Retro Arch. And there's a lot of information contained in these next couple of pages I'm gonna show you that's applicable to all versions of Retro Arch across all the different platforms. So let's start off here at the BIOS page. And I like this page because it's very simple, clean cut, straightforward. Basically, what it boils down to is if you want to know whether an emulator requires BIOS, yes or no, you come to this page. If the emulator is listed here in the first column, it requires BIOS. If it's not listed here, then it doesn't require them. The great thing about this is that this is applicable not just for people who are using RetroPie, but this is applicable to pretty much any version of retro arch so if you're on the nintendo switch and you wanted to play sega genesis roms through retro arch on your switch do you need to have bios uh sega genesis bios no because they're not listed on here if i wanted to play snes roms on my ps3 would i need snes bios no, because SNES is not on this list. If I wanted to play Dreamcast on my Raspberry Pi, do I need Dreamcast BIOS? Yes, because Dreamcast is here. If I wanted to play Dreamcast uh, on any version of RetroArch, on any platform that allows it, I'm going to have to make sure that I have Dreamcast BIOS because it's on this list. I need to make sure that platform has those Dreamcast BIOS installed. So if it's on the list, it's a yes. If it's not, it's a no. Everything here in the second column where, you know, it says location, that's specific to people who are using RetroPie, but everything here in the first column is applicable to everybody using any version of RetroArch. All right, guys, and back here at this setup page for RetroPie, I don't know if I've said it before, but I'll say it again because I cannot stress it enough you should bookmark this page because there's a lot of content here, useful information that can benefit um, anyone using RetroArch on any platform. Doesn't matter whether you're going to use RetroPie or not. There's even files you can download here that can come in handy. Um, we're gonna be doing a tutorial on how to you know, clean up your ROMs and we are going to be using DAT files, D-A-T, and we need nice, official, clean DAT files. And a lot of them, if not most of them or all of them, can be downloaded from here. So again, I can't stress it enough. Bookmark this page because there's a lot of useful stuff here. I'll give you an example of that here in just a little bit. But first, there's something I want to cover regarding the BIOS. Just a reminder for those of you who are using RetroPie. And yeah, for those of you using RetroPie, just make sure that whenever you are going to use an emulator or a core that requires BIOS, double check the MD5 checksum um, here. 
because there are instances where the bios in RetroPie that are required may be different from the bios that are used in all the other versions of RetroArch. So let me give you an example. Let's go to the Sega CD. And if we scroll down a bit here, okay, these are the three files that are required when you're going to use the Genesis Plus GX emulator. You need to have, you know, the bio CDU, CDE, and CDJ. And here it gives you the checksums. So if you notice the one of the CDU, it ends in 4F7F. If we go to the page where we were at before, this, um, the, uh, what is it, the BIOS Information Hub, and we scroll down to the Sega um, CD here, the Genesis Plus GX, on here, if we look at the BIOS CDU bin, it actually ends in 1290. Now, I noticed that the U and the J are different, but the E is the same. It is possible that you can use the same BIOS that were here um, in RetroPie, and they may work. But then again, they may not because these two at least are different, the U and the J. So most of the time, whenever you have the BIOS here um, for a Libertro core, those BIOS will work across all versions of RetroArch, including RetroPie. But there are times in RetroPie the BIOS required can be different. So just make sure that you double check to ensure that you have the right ones. All right, guys, and I'm going to wrap this up by just giving you an example of some of the information that's here that may be beneficial, not just to the people using RetroPie, but for those of you using RetroArch on any other system. I'm going to use Neo Geo and MAME as an example here. So let's click on Neo Geo. Whenever you click on any of the systems here on the right, you're brought to a page like this. It will list all the emulators that are capable of playing the games for that system in your Raspberry Pi. Those of you who are using RetroArch on a different platform, what you need to be concerned with are the emulators that you see here that begin with LR, because LR stands for Libertro. And these are pretty much the same, if not the same identical cores that are in all versions of RetroArch that you can download and install. For example, if we go here to FB Alpha 2012, right here, we click on it, we're gonna get a bunch of information here. It tells you the ROM set that goes with FB Alpha 2012. Now, FB Alpha 2012 is like on every version of RetroArch out there from the Nintendo Minis, uh, which I think there it's called FB Alpha 2012 Neo Geo to PS3 to your PC, whatever. So if you were to go out there, look for this ROM set, install it, on your system, as long as you have FB Alpha 2012 installed in RetroArch, then you should be able to play the games in this ROM set. It even tells you the number of games that should be in that ROM set. Sometimes it's clickable and you can see all the games that are in the ROM set, it lists them, but even better, um, a lot of times the DAT file will be here where you can download it. These DAT files are extremely useful because they are needed in order to organize your ROMs clean them up uh, or whatever, fix them using ROM managers. They require these DAT files. And here they were even nice enough since a lot of people use FB Alpha 2012 to play only Neo Geo games, they made a DAT file with only the Neo Geo games. If we go up to MAME, you're gonna see here that there are a lot of emulators that can play MAME games on the Raspberry Pi. But the ones that start with LR are those Libertro cores and pretty much the information for any emulator here that begins with LR is applicable to that emulator regardless of what platform is being run on. So we click main 2003, which again is extremely popular. It's on every version of RetroArch out there. It tells you the ROM set that goes with main 2003, which is 0 0.78 and that's accurate. It tells you how many games are in the ROM set. And then here's that all important DAT file. So this is just an example. There's other stuff on here, but of course I can't cover everything. 
of course, not every single emulator that's in your retro arch, like on your PC or PS3 or whatever, will be here. But you can come and check. And if there is any information about it, at least it's just some extra stuff you have about that particular core or that emulator that, you know, will hopefully help you out. All right, guys, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up. I know I said I was going to show you some stuff regarding the Neo Geo BIOS, but I do think that that video uh, or that tutorial deserves its own video. Plus, this one is stretching a little bit too long, and I'm going to need like six or seven minutes at least to cover that stuff. So I'm going to work on that video now and hopefully I'll release it for you tomorrow. Don't forget, as always, to thumbs up and subscribe. A lot more things coming out regarding all of this emulation, retro arch stuff. And, you know, just other things here and there in general, PS3, Android, Switch, PS4, PC, all that good stuff. All right, guys, we'll see you on the next one. Take care.